Hello, guys. Happy Hum Day, everyone. Hello, friends who is tuning in from Instagram, from LinkedIn, from YouTube, and from Facebook. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another of my weekly LinkedIn Live 30 minutes coffee break with your LinkedIn Go. Have you guys bring your coffee today? Let me know where you're tuning in from because the fact that you're tuning in, it must be a topic that you're really interested. So I'm really excited to have you here today and I love me a good coffee. I don't see any comments flowing in yet. Um, just hope that I'm actually live because usually the comments will throw already when there's music. All right, we got it. Andrew, hello, hello. I miss you, buddy, and really good to see you here. And um, do you have your early baguette uh, with you for your morning coffee? I know it's super early for you in uh, San Francisco. You recently moved. I hope you have a great, smooth move. Um, hello again. And um, Stephen, so good to see you again week in and week out. You're awesome, and I absolutely love your energy. And Craig, so good to see you. Hello, hello. Amazing. So good to see you. And um, we've got a lot of cool people joining today. And Christian, hello. Oh, my goodness. You're catching me at 6 a.m. too. Oh, you guys are all early, Burr. I love it. I love it. And then I just want to say hi to my IG friends, uh, Dion. Hi, Dion. And also I2I Coaching. All right. We've got a lot of... Um, really cool folks here today. So thank you again for joining my weekly coffee. And if you haven't had your coffee yet, go and get your coffee right now. If you prefer tea, that's totally fine. Go and grab your tea or matcha or any preferred beverages. I would love to have you joining us to today's topic, which is something that I'm very passionate about. And uh, I will I will talk a little bit about it. And Ben, good to see you. First time here. Welcome. Welcome to this beautiful, amazing community. And Martin, hey, 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 what's up, buddy? It's so good to see you. You bring so much amazing insight and energy to my life week in and week out. I appreciate you so much. And another Martin. <laughs> I love it. Keep it coming. We we need like um like a triple Martin in this show. <laughs> and Martin, welcome, welcome. Excited for the session. Me too. So before I started, last week I promised that I got something extra special cooking up. Craig might know because Craig is my absolutely superstar client here. Drum roll, please. Can you guess what that is? is the door is open for registration. I'm hosting a free live LinkedIn masterclass. It will be take a behind scene look at how I convert my LinkedIn connection to sales. So we will be covering like you, you like take out all the guesswork, how you can build a high impact LinkedIn profile and stop struggling using LinkedIn to maximize your business revenue. I think that is what last time um, um, Martin, as well as Osan, a couple of you, um, asking whether there's any session out there. There you go. I finally have it. And hello, Fuji. Hello, go check around. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys are here tuning in from IG and LinkedIn, my LinkedIn family right there. And in this masterclass, you'll be expecting to learn three things. One is the most effective way to rank higher on LinkedIn search. So LinkedIn is also operating a little bit like Google, which you need to win SEO as well on LinkedIn. So when people are searching for your coaching service, searching for your finance advisory, searching for other things like your career coach, you need to be present. And when people search, you need to be ranking on top. So I will be talking about how I rank on top when it comes to LinkedIn coaches. And secondly, how to develop a powerful mindset shift in order to start generating sales. I know you'd be like, Selena, I want more LinkedIn tips, but trust me on this one, you will love it. And the last but not least is my step-by-step -step proven process my team and I took in order to turn our LinkedIn connection into customers. And the last thing is I have a surprise and a bonus, which is my very own LinkedIn success roadmap, which is happening for the last eight months, how I come from a 1,500 
like followers as a community to now almost, I think I checked yesterday, almost hitting 800, uh, sorry, 8,500. So I would love to have you all joining me if you guys are available or you, it's a topic that you're interested. I really want you to be uh, finding success here uh, on LinkedIn. I want you to create a high impact LinkedIn profile in your industry, in the expertise that you're in, and grow a very close knitted, highly engaged community on LinkedIn. I'm here to support you. So join me next week and save yourself a very special spot because I would love to have you. I will drop in a link for you later, but if you don't want to wait, then go www.theinacademy.com slash masterclass. All right. So for who, those of you who don't know me, I see a couple of like new friends here. Um, Sanka, Ben, you said you're new here. And Christian, I'm so happy to see you. She has amazing content, by the way, on LinkedIn. So do check her profile up as well as her, her amazing content. And Martin, obviously, bringing the best energy as um, usual. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm doing this every week. And I'm Selena Young, the ex-LinkedIn girl who turned into the CEO of the In Academy in the middle of COVID. I am showing up for you every week, every Wednesday at this specific time to share one topic, one hack to help you to get real results on LinkedIn. Utilize the power of this platform and stop feeling stuck and overwhelmed and lack of time figure LinkedIn all by yourself. So I'm here for you, friends. So if you're solopreneurs, if you're business coaches, or one in making, you're thinking, side hustler who is looking to build a strong personal brand, turn connection into customers, and boost social engagement, you, my friend, you're at the right place. So let's do this. I'm super excited to share this topic with you because we all have been through it. So let's start with, let's take a trip down to memory lane how many of you give me a fire emoji i'm copying martin here give me a huge fire emoji if you have done a business 101 class give me a fire emoji if you have done a business 101 class you know that class where where you you know you're given like this elevated pitch about your fake company to perhaps like a thousand people or even like with a smaller class, perhaps like a hundred people, uh, other students in the lecture hall who everyone stares at you. And yeah, that's the one, right? Like, have you done that? Because I, I do. I do. Or anything that is related to it, you know, like a business uh, networking or anything. All right. I hope there are some people telling me, yes, I have been that. All right. Either you were the 1% people who love the public speaking, or you were like the rest of us, stumbling over their words with crazy nerves, sweaty palms, wishing everyone gets exactly what is coming out from your mouth, but you actually don't know what is happening. Is that you? Is that you? Let me know in the comment box below, because I want to know whether that's you. All right. No, that's not a good time, right? But that's okay. Business 101 was an elevated pitch for a fake business, right? Like if you join that class, it is a fake business pitching. The stakes are low. But how about now, my friend? Ask yourself, how about now? The problem is the business is now real, right? That means the stakes now is real. <laughs> I like Martin is like, no, untrained dummy here. Don't worry. That's why you're here. And I am also perfecting my pitch week in and week out as well. So don't worry. And potential business revenue is literally lying around the table, whether you try to nail that elevated pitch, right, of your business or simply share with others what you do, how you help. Imagine you step into an elevator. You find yourself face to face with a CEO or business decision maker of your dream company or the clients that you have been always dying to close or lend. Like, oh, I would love to have that client. I hope Yusama is here today because Yusama always tell me he, he have a dream client that you want to lend. And you cannot afford to say it's okay, right, at pitching your business anymore. You have to be confident. 
You have to be succinct. You have to have crystal clear idea on your value proposition, and you ex you need a elevator pitch that is exactly the same. Have your elevator pitch ready. It's super freaking important. So selling your ideas, your vision is what we do as entrepreneur, right? It's so important for us as entrepreneur to understand the importance of knowing how to communicate and successfully channel what our product and service to our prospective clients. <laughs> Martin said, "I just faint." I mean, me too. So I, I'll tell you a story. I a little bit dissecting about, about a bit, but I, I love that Martin Martin brought that point. I used to be a horrible, horrible, horrendous, horrendous、um, public speaker.、Uh, I I'm just like shaking, not even fainting, but I I will actually vomit. It's it's like that bad because I'm so nervous when I'm speaking in front of people. And I would start like looking at them, looking at their the tip of their nose, or looking in the middle of their you know eyebrow, in order just so that I, I can channel my thought.、Um, and but when I need to speak in front of a lot of people, I I stutter as well as I just I just want to vomit. So I have all these like weird,、um, weird sort of like reaction to it. But it's okay. We're going to talk about. How to sort of perfect your elevator pitch today, and I want to ask: Do you have your elevator pitch ready, or you are struggling to sell your service and product like a pro? So today we're going to talk about how to nail an elevator pitch like a boss. In this episode, I will share three strategies to thrive for creating the absolutely best elevator pitch that you can implement. Right away to make it sell and make an impact, <laughs> Martin. You just make me laugh so badly. Oh, could just、uh, handcuff myself to them or toss the key until they get the attention. <laughs> yes, if that works, I would love that. You know,、uh, we're we're all pitching the purple dinosaur here. All right, so. If you want to start making the impact and craft your business pitch that is powerful and attention grabbing, then be my guest and really bring out your notebook because today all these things are so like delicious as well as so good、um, to basically share、um, what it's out there. All right. So number one, first thing first, most important thing is you can do in a pitch is credibility. You need to go through your pitch, practice it tons. I mean, meaning tons of it. Whether it's a one-minute pitch, whether it's a two-minute pitch, or a full-hour pitch, or some some pitch conference, allow you to do up to two to three hours. So you better go through your entire pitch with a fine-tooth comb of the credibility. So, because this is where most people lose a pitch is because they are overselling. Because this is where most people lose a pitch is because they are overselling. Worst still, the worst is the back end selling. They lie, they manipulate, they cheat on their own pitch. They might not mean to, but they felt like they don't have the credibility in order to have other people trust them in order to buy from them. That's why they decided to lie. They sway away from the truth. But people are smarter than you think. People would start looking at skepticism in everything that you say and slow down the progress and break the trust. So credibility matters, and the truth matters as well. That also means that you have. Like illuminating your weakness as well. People respect and gain like credibility when you talk a little bit about problems, challenge with them, even your failures. Don't think that's what people decide or not to work with you. It's actually opposite. You need to basically highlight those truths and let people know actually you've been there, and with that you resonate with them. You help to create that emotional connection, which is the second point that I will talk about. But let me let you in for a secret. Oh, Jessica is in here, and、um, um, 
Oh, I got a lot of new friends tuning in. Amazing. Jessica, I'm so good to see you. Um, Martin is still like up, up here joining us. And Emil from IG, so good to see you. As well as Sean, happy, happy that you guys are here. All right. Well, going back to the point of credibility, there is a mathematical equation to credibility. If you are 100% credible, people will do exactly what you say. In fact, if you was 100% credible in your areas of expertise, in your area of industry, you can tell everyone, hey, wire me $1,000. And then next day, they will, I'll give you $2,000 by the end of the week. And everyone would do so if you was 100% credible. But now, I have not reached that potential yet. But I work, I practice, I do it every single day. And the more you practice, the more clarity you get. The more weighted balance of your value, the more focuses you are, right? Like in terms of your pitch, if your value proposition. So go through everything. Practice that exact same pitch over and over and over again. And stay consistent and also persistent with that truth. I need to be very, very, very blunt with you. People are very skeptical when you're not telling the truth. They will really dig deeper. And the worst is, what if one day your business are so successful and they go back and find out you're not what you say you are and this is not what you told me and they feel treated. And you know what? When they feel cheated, they feel, don't feel trust, then they can no longer wanted to work with you. And that's really difficult to hurt that reputation and continue building up. So I'm, I really wish that, um, this is helpful. And let me give you a little bit of tangible advice, how you can build your credibility as well as making sure your pitch is throughout, like in the exact format. So this actionable tip is that you can create a one sheet uh, cheat sheet. When I used to work for Neil Burnett, um, which we have like one sheet of what we call the fact sheet. So you can do a fact sheet with one, one um, page of PDF with just essential information, right? Boil it down to one places. This is where you share all the key details about your business, your past clients, your partnership, and that paint a picture of what it will look like to do business with you. And take note, make sure it's only one page document, include your contact information, email, phone, as well as your website. So th there you go. That is one tangible tip, how you can build that credibility elevator pitch for you, like that element. Yes. And uh, Martin said, yes, very true. Exactly why scammer were hacking certain account recently and telling people to send money. <laughs> and yes, Elon Musk is so 100% credible in his own space. And whenever he said something on Twitter or any account, people just rush and buy that thing, right? Buy that shit, even like Dogecoin or anything that he mentioned, he touched, <laughs> it becomes gold right? It's just because he had built and established that amazing credibility. And you can do that too, my friend. You just take the time and do it. And slowly you will get there. Just like me, I'm slowly building my credibility, building the trust around my clients. That's how um, we sort of get to it. Second, I quickly mentioned a little bit earlier, it's about emotional marketing. So I want to ask all of you, um, IG friends or friends that is from LinkedIn, do you know what human marketing is? What emotional marketing is? Have you heard about that term? <laughs> oh, Fasel, hello, hello, you're joining. Amazing to see you, Fasel. I miss you in my live session. And uh, even <laughs> Tesla tequila, yes, yes, yes. Um, Guys, you have to check out Facel, a uh, really amazing LinkedIn profile. He's got a really cool one and he have amazing content on LinkedIn. He's helping basically professional to get 10x um, result. And um, he got a really 
exciting article that he written about Tesla. I won't give too much about it, but、uh, go ahead and you know connect with him as well as、um, get get to know a little bit of what he does. But anyway, anybody know human marketing? Everybody heard about emotional marketing? If you do, let me know because it's a very interesting term that I think a lot of you do not know that technical term, but you do know the idea of it. And I miss you too, Fasal. Great. So I- I'm like waiting for it. Ah,、uh, Martin. Yes. So all marketing is emotional, or should be. Yes. Big yes. So let's dive into it. So I said it. People buy on emotion for a very logical pe-、uh, reason. People buy into emotion. Um, we don't just, you know, do a lot of times when we're pitching is doing enough research to find out what people like and what they don't like. We do not simply do enough research, and sometimes it's not about you. It's about your clients, potential prospect. It's about them. We don't do enough research or interest to find out how do I make myself equal. Then allow myself to appreciate the difference. Appreciate means add value to the difference, not creating separation, the void, or the shortage, or like obstacle by creating attacking thoughts or judgmental or condition upon like differences in some comparison that suck in that energy, right? That emotion out of it, but instead gain that emotion. And gain that attraction and attachment with your prospect because people buy from emotion for that logical reason, and create that emotional attachment with your audience. What I'm doing here every single day, every single week, I am trying to create an emotional attachment with you. Human being attached to different、uh, personality. That's why we have different friends. We have different people that we are attracted to as a spouse, as friends, as you know, like like as employee and employer, right? So create that emotional attra-、uh, attack. Um, sorry, attachment with your audience. Um, and we emotionally attached as human beings. So I hope this is helpful. And the last but not least, I am talking about all elevator pitch today, right? And I want to remind you one thing: majority of the elevator pitch that I have heard, and I join so much like you know um, uh, uh, masterminds. I join like tons of like different pitch club and program. And one thing that I find as a common de- denominator that it's a fail pitch. Is that they do not provide quantifiable value? Yes, they do not provide quantifiable value. A lot of people cannot transition from an emotional marketing attachment that I just mentioned、um, that they receive the credibility that we talk about. Number one, that they give given into a quantifiable value. I will explain a little bit about what quantifiable value means. We only rely on the emotion. The credibility that we have built from the past and translate directly to the pitch. I'm not saying these two points are not important. These are super, super important. But you can sell your emotion. You can sell your features. You can sell your benefit. Yeah, you might get a very few quick close, but you and I know that that's not the type of business that you want to thrive. Are you with me on this? If yes, give me a heart emoji so that I know it's something that you feel like it's something that oh, it's so true. I have all these laid out, but not a quantifiable、um, quantifiable value that I laid out. And Martin said, yes. If you can address what's the prospect wants and need instead of being about yourself or about your product and service, ideally that will be great. Yes. What it is worth to me? Yes. So, so there you go. I think this is really, really important. So let me drill down a little bit about the quantifiable value. So learn to quantify everything in your business,、uh, especially when it comes to result. The reason why is somebody should work with you 
and they talk about the tangible numbers, the credible numbers, not the fake numbers. I'll give you a really perfect example. For example, someone would tell me, Selena, I grow my business revenue by 300% this year. I was like, oh, well, great. Happy for you. Amazing. And they would say, well, to me, you can make $3 last year. And now you made $9. There you go. 300. So you have to add it there, like the actual quantifiable value, the amount that you earn not that percentage or else people will get confused. Start quantifying for things. The more we like leave the void, the obstacles, the more we create an interference between us and the truth. And you will lo lose that credibility again and the trust that you have tried to build online for the longest time, right? And less statistically, you will have a successful pitch. So don't just feature the benefit and dump it on people. Don't do that. Don't shower them with those benefit and feature because it, it needs more. Also, quantifiable, quantifiable, like quantifying value, also quantifying your impact. The impact is also emotional aspect, but the impact has usually a huge long-term numbers that are like equivalent with them. When we can create and impact our environment, we are then now transitioned to something more, what I love to say, emotional safety feeling that we bring. I'm talking about a real quantifiable numbers of impacts. This can save time. It can help people to save energies. It can save actual dollars. And look at the impact of where your service, your product, gained and help people save in a way, right? According to the impact that of your solution and service. Let's take my business, for example. I help entrepreneur as well as small online business owner to create a rock solid online presence on LinkedIn, allowing them to advertise, market, and sell their service and product and better without paying a single dime on advertising on LinkedIn and various other channels. Save them time, resources to figure out the right way to grow LinkedIn. So yes, there you go. It's very important to quantify that impact for your audience, for your prospect, as well as you know the time, the resources piece that attach back to the emotional attachment that I talked about earlier. So I hope this is helpful and I got some tangible sort of suggestion for you as well. And Martin said, it might sound impressive, but what's behind the big words and statistic, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it needs to, <clears throat> sorry, it needs to really boils down back to your audience. Sorry. Drinking some coffee so that... <laughs> Um, my, um, my voice could get a little bit softer, but so this is really, really important. Like I said, really quantifying uh, quantifying your value. So how do you help yourself to organize that? Then how do you really communicate in your perfect pitch? Right. And the perfect pitch could be in public speaking or that pitch could be sending through as a proposal or a one pager to your client. So put together a press kit, a longer version of your one page PDF that I just talked about earlier. This is a document where you take the deep dive into all the granular details of your business, include your founding information, how you found your company, how you get started, um, key message, uh, sorry, key measurables and details about exactly what you have to offer and add more information to the press kit that offer real, tangible, and credible um, data uh, to your potential clients and uh, partners. Yes, absolutely, Martin. That's why we have a coffee break. Martin, I want to know, are you a coffee drinker or a tea drinker or a matcha drinker or a kombucha drinker? Uh, which one are you? I'm, intri I'm intrigued to know. Let me know. I know for Fasel, um, he joined earlier. Uh, he is uh, a coffee drinker plus obviously uh, 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 alcohol. Um, he loves alcohol. Te tequila. Yeah, there you go. And so, yeah, let me know. 
which one are you? So I will remember. Uh, I remember all my amazing community and audience, what you like. And Jessica as well. Jessica is here. Let me know what you love to drink uh, uh, too uh, during my show. Or maybe you're putting your laptop, getting ready to work, and you're listening to me. And if that's the case, I really, really appreciate all of you. <laughs> Martin said, cold drinks only. Love it. It's so hard nowadays, right? I mean, me too. Um, I need to add a couple of ice cubes on my coffee. I love my um, coffee uh, cold as well sometimes. And good to know. Uh, yes, <laughs> for sale, no. you know your clients really well. I truly do. You like you like cocktails, you like great drinks, you like like um, uh, bubbly water, uh, you like yourself a nice cup of coffee, and uh, you are a very disciplined person. All right, so so this is the um, the sorry. So going back, I'm like really really off off topic, but I'm really happy just to interact with you guys. Not just all business sometimes or tips, right? Is to create that press kit so you can share with you. And that press kit is so useful for you. Not just you know like in terms of sending it to your podcast show or anybody that is looking into you know interviewing you, or it could also be like later sending and changing and tweaking a little bit for your proposal to your prospect as well as client as well. And what you can also do on LinkedIn is say that one one or three pager portfolio, you can also update it right at your very first work experience um, idea over there. And you have like multimedia, you can add, you can add links, you can add video and add your PDF over there. And that's the exact same elevator pitch you've got everywhere and nate amazing you're here nate so good to see you amazing that you're tuning in i know it's super early for you um in nevada i think it's 6 34 a.m for you oh my gosh i got such early bird audience um and i love it and uh funnily i'm not an early bird i am more a night owl but i love the way how it is it's just my my uh, my mind function better at nighttime. Anyway, so second tangible action is QA your lookbook app as well as portfolio. This is the part where you get to show off all the credible work you're doing or so the person or companies you're pitching to cannot wait to work with you. If you have an e-commerce product or physical product, this is going to look like showing a bit like a virtual sorry uh, looks like you're showing um, visual of your product, providing the description and curating that cohesive look for your brand. So if you offer a service-based product, you can feature past work, client testimonial, or description of that ve like various package you're offering tailored to your customer's needs and present those feature and benefit that we talked about earlier that give that magical transformation to let your like potential clients know, hey, if you decided to work with me, this is going to be the like transformation. It's all about that transformation, right? And pair with what we just talked about earlier is the quantifiable value. You need to pair that with it and solve the problem uniquely with you, right? Starting with you as a coach, starting with you as an entrepreneur, how you represent yourself means so much. And be able to explain that this clearly, simply, so that people can get it right away. So there you go. Three strategies that I use for my very own elevator pitch every single time when I'm talking with clients during a one-on-one -on -one discovery call or when I am on a show, when people ask me what I do, that's the elevator pitch. It's all the quant like the three things, right? Just to highlight. Establish that credibility, make sure it's truthful. Secondly is the emotional attach, making sure you have that. Go beyond the feature, the benefit that you're offering, the transformation. Quantify, like quantify the value that it's upcoming. So these are the three strategies that I really hope that you can take away um, for like with you when you are looking to create your elevator pitch next and you'll have a confidence you need to pitch your business without getting a sweaty palms and like crazy nerves all right so there you go 
Oh, you summon. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm like so excited to have you here. And Martin as well. You guys are just like the best uh audience in the house. Like, woo! It's so much energy. I love it. Ma uh Yusama, we miss you. We talked about you earlier. Um, and I, I talked like I wish I you I have you earlier because when I'm talking about that tip, I was thinking about you. But anyway, when you have time, go back to what we talked about earlier. That's like really exciting. And Jory, hello. <laughs> wow. I love that you're you're writing me Chinese. You're amazing. You know, like this like literally means like you're uh, incredible. But that's like um uh, Mandarin. No, that's traditional Chinese. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. The magic sauce. I'm so glad you're here and tuning in. And actually, we're we're almost the end of it, but I just want to quickly share with you the do and don'ts of an elevator pitch because we mentioned about the feature, we need to mention the transformation, we need to mention the credible part as well as quantifying your value, right? And oh, I see my friend Anna is joining from Instagram. Hello, my dear. I know it's super early for you. Um, you're tuning in from Texas, so it must be. Am I right? Six. Sorry, I need to adjust my chair. 638 for you. Is it 638 for you? Okay, let me know. I'm so glad you can tune in, tune in. And also you summer as well. You rock as well, bro. I'm so happy you're here. All right. So let's get to the final, final point. Oh, it's eight. Okay, good. Good. Um, good. And and good morning to you. I wish you have a really lovely coffee. I hope you catch back the session where where we are left off, because I just talk a little bit about the elevator pitch. But now quickly, let me get to the do and don'ts about uh, an elevator pitch. What you don't want to do is don't pitch something has nothing to do with your target audience, right? You will say like, Selena, duh, I know. And do pitch about your niche. And don't submit pitch documents with errors. Yes, you hear me right. Don't submit your document, your pitch with errors. You know how many pitch uh, when I'm still working at LinkedIn from like other vendors are coming in my email and I decided to reject it. Although they have the best package, like they have the best design, but you know what really just like make me like really struggle is I see error in the document. It could be like misspell things. It could be like they update the document until 2000, like 12, you know, and you'll be like, oh, are you even like, like really value my uh, like partnership? Your pitch and proposal is not even updated. So I know it's something that you will be like, oh, Selena, it's something that I, I know already, but I hope it's a really great reminder for you. So do make sure everything you turn in has polished up as well as is fully updated. And then what others you don't want to do is don't leave out um, important, credible, truthful information. Like I said earlier, do give the company everything you need to do business with you. Give them all the reason of reason that they're like, oh, yes, 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 I want to do it. Okay, and don't only focus on yourself. Do show interest in who you're talking to and do research, my friends. Trust me, one of the things that why majority of the salespeople or entrepreneur that haven't been in sales before really are failing, not just because they, they just thought overselling themselves will help. That's not the truth but it's really not doing enough research of the other person. So really make sure when you are jumping on a discovery call with them before that, it's it's really easy. People can sense it, how much you care about them and how much you know about them, right? It's like a little bit like a job interview, right? They will be like, oh, so how much how much do you know about your um, my business, right? You always hear that going and you will be pump, 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 pump. Like, oh my gosh, I did not spend much enough time to... um to do research, uh, would you mind telling me, right? Like, no, 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 shake yourself up. If you want to close deal right now, right here today, grab this tangible um, uh, tips from me, do research, do research. It's really help your elevator pitch. And that is going to help you to be an elevator pitch uh, when you're doing it. 
And、uh, Jessica, thank you for letting me you know you're a coffee girl, just like I do. So cheers for that. And Yusama, I actually don't know whether you prefer coffee or tea or other.、Um, Uh, beverages and Martin, I haven't got your end. No, I do. You like cold drinks, but what type of cold drinks? I wanted to know. So next time when I'm hosting this live episode, I'm like basically virtually imagining you,、um, Martin, with a cold glass of drinks, and then hearing like all all those like sort of ice cube dangling, and then Jessica with the coffee. And for sale with with you know his cocktail. I know it's early for you,、um, so yeah. Let me know. So you sum up both. All right. So you like coffee as well as tea. Good to know. Good to know. All right. So I hope this is really helpful in terms of like how you can nail your elevator pitch. Trust me, is one of the most foundational thing that you need to nail.、Um, Initially, when you try to basically talk about yourself, right,、uh, attracting investor, clients, prospect can be tough for any business. That's why you have to create your very own elevator pitch. Make it concise, make it clear, make it truthful. We talk about that. Make it interesting. And if your elevator pitch is successful. Your potential clients may request even more information from you. They want to get more meetings with you, and the Business opportunities start coming, and you start closing deals. Let's do this. So, hope you enjoy these three strategies to nail、uh, elevator pitch like a boss. Like I said earlier, I think it's really extremely important、uh, to basically nail that、uh, when when it comes to your business. And、uh, I'm so grateful to have you all spending your West Wednesday afternoon with me. Sorry that I'm overrunning a little bit again today, but、uh, you someone say I tried cold coffee for the first time. It was amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh, cold coffee if cold ice cappuccino. Oh, I just love it. 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 <laughs> All right. And Andrew, hello, new friends. Good to see you.、Um, love the passion. Thank you for the LinkedIn invite. Uh, look forward、um, to some wonderful knowledge every day from you. Oh my goodness! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great! I really appreciate each and every one of you, Jessica, Fasel, Stephen, everyone who tuned in today. And just want to quickly let all of you know again. Remember that special announcement that I told you last week that I'm going to share is that I am hosting a free live LinkedIn masterclass. Behind the scenes to look at how I convert my LinkedIn connection into sales. A lot of people shy away talking about sales, but I do not because that helps our bottom line. That's how help help us and as entrepreneur get more positive impact out there, business impact as well as from our families, right? So I think it's really important. So don't ever shy away talking about sales. It's not a topic. I mean. Majority of you know、uh, where I'm coming from, right? I'm coming from Hong Kong. I brought up and grew up with with Asian families, and talking about money is never something that they feel good about it. But you know what? Slowly, I realize as I mean, when I grew up, I realize it's one of the things that a lot of people feel shy to talk about. But you should not. It shouldn't be something you're shy away talking about because that's your business. That's your life. And I think work life balance is not a good term because. Work and life shouldn't be balancing because when you're working, um, in fact, work life is、uh, contributing thirty three percent of your like sort of、uh, life. So it shouldn't be separated from your life. It's integrating with it. So so anyway, my point is. Don't ever shy away talking about sales number, and we talk a little bit quantifying about the value earlier. So don't ever、uh, forget about that point when you're creating your elevator pitch. I hope today's episode is helpful, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. And the magic sauce says, <laughs> "Gaya." That means、um, at oil. That's like literally means like break a leg. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you.、Um, The magic sauce. I'm so grateful that you're here. Do your homework. Have a plan. Ask question. Be prepared.、Uh, right, Martin. Yes, absolutely. And、um, Yusama said, "Oh, keep up with the greatness." And right back at you, my friend. And Martin said, "Any non-alcoholic, just cold, not picky." All right. This is good to know. All right. So when Fasel and you are in the room, 
I will serve for, for sell all the drinks and uh, for you, just all the cold drinks. <laughs> Not picky. I love it. <laughs> and Seb, so good to see you. Although I know it's the end of it, but I'm very, very grateful that uh, you can tune in and please do go back if you are interested in today's topic to really nail your elevator pitch. And Andrew, uh, don't forget us down in San Diego. Yes, absolutely. I will not. Very happy that everyone is joining. And again, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you. And I hope to see you all next week, same time, next Wednesday and um, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time, as well as I think 6 a.m. PST. I know it's a little bit early for all of you. But uh, yeah, again, I'm very, very grateful for uh, all of you and see you all next week as well as in my live LinkedIn masterclass. Bye for now, everyone. See you.